Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment for the HP Spectre 16. Now I'll start off the review by letting all of you know that this is my favorite two-in-one one of 2022. Granted, the year is young, but this is tough to beat. It pretty much checks every box. I think that the majority of two-in-one users looking for a larger machine will be after. It has a gorgeous display that happens to be an OLED that also happens to be beyond 4K resolution. I'll get to that in a little bit. It has a solid quad-core processor that compares favorably to, again, the very small yet existing two-in-one competition. We also have an NVIDIA RTX 3050 with four gigs of dedicated VRAM, which at least gives you more flexibility clearly than having no discrete GPU option. We have a fantastic keyboard, very good build quality, I would say okay speakers, and of course we also have pen input, but most importantly, battery life doesn't take the hit you might think that it would because of this high resolution 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio OLED. So battery life we're looking at close to eight hours. I mean, it really depends on what you're doing. I'm gonna say six to eight, but if you're really aggressive uh, when it comes to battery management, you could even see more than eight hours. Charging time uh, using the included power brick, which is connected, you can see that right here, uh, for the purposes of just rerunning this benchmark for God knows how many times I've run it already at this point, but drivers change, results change. Uh, you're looking at a little over an hour, so pretty fast on the recharge, and I think that's very reasonable considering, again, uh, the battery life being very solid for a machine of this caliber and size. Now, when it comes to pricing, uh, the review unit that we're looking at here that was sent over by HP retails for over $2,000. In fact, right now, through Best Buy, you can pick up this same configuration, usually at a little under $2,100. It's on sale for $1,780, I think, 80. so under $1,800, I think, at that price point. This is an excellent purchase for the consumers that this machine appeals to. Now, before you get caught up in you know, how maybe underwhelming uh, the CPU-GPU combo is, you must remember this is a two-in-one. If you're looking for something strictly, you know, from a power perspective for photo, video editing, and gaming, this isn't that machine. In fact, no two-in-one is. However, if you want the best two-in-one that money can buy, again, here in 2022, this machine is that unit, in my opinion. So, uh, what rub is there with this? Well, first and foremost, the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 16 inch OLED display, again, that has beyond 4K resolution, you're looking at 3840 by 2400. It's excellent, but it's 60 Hertz. Now for me, I don't see this as an issue at all, uh, but inherently because of marketing and owning other devices that are higher refresh rates, Consumers generally will look at this and say, why would HP not give us 120 hertz? At the very least, for pen input. And by the way, pen input here is good. It's not amazing, uh, but it's what you expect from a two-in-one, which is completely serviceable. Note-taking, uh, drawing, you know, I wouldn't say that this is going to be ideal for artists, but I think artists will be happy to use it. It also charges using a Type-C port on board, very solid battery life, and overall, you know, it works well. Again, magnetically attaches right there, back to that refresh rate. Now, if they had incorporated 120 hertz to this machine, I'm assuming we would see a benefit to pen input, but there is no question we would also see a hit to battery life. And while many consumers may say, well, I would prefer to have that choice because of course with a 120 hertz panel, you could drop it down to 60 hertz. Let's also be realistic about the fact that this is the first panel of its kind. So it's easy to be critical of something like that in the same vein. To my knowledge, this is the only uh, 4K plus, that is UHD plus resolution, 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio OLED on earth. So with that taken into account, again, 60 Hertz, I don't think is an issue. Also, this really isn't a machine based around gaming. That would be the other area where there would be a perceivable gain to having that 120 hertz refresh rate. And with that RTX 3050, you will be able to game, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Most titles in 1080p, low settings, 720p in more demanding games that really push it beyond. But the fact of the matter is this 
system is built around NVIDIA's studio drivers, not the traditional uh, gaming drivers, which again indicates to you this isn't aimed at gaming, even if it can double uh, for some light gaming in a pinch, because it does have, a, I would say, a solid discrete GPU. Granted, it's the entry-level RTX. So very similar to perf uh, performance to what we got out of the previous generation uh, Spectre 15T with the H-Series 6-core processor. That was a 10th gen chip as opposed to the 11th gen quad core chip we're getting here. And of course, a 1600 series GPU versus uh, the RTX 3050. Both have four gigs of VRAM. And as I stated, when I compared this machine uh, to its predecessor, it was really close in overall performance. The major difference as we see this result come up, which again is nothing to get overly excited about, but remember it's an RTX 3050, so you have to be realistic about that, is that it does deliver a solid blend for anyone looking to essentially travel fairly light. It's 4.4 pounds, so it's far from heavy for a 16-inch machine. It has a display unlike any other on the market. Granted, it doesn't get incredibly bright. I think even at 400 nits, that's still fairly good. And then in addition to that, you really do have, uh, you know, a great keyboard, great trackpad, solid build quality, uh, a great webcam right there, top center. It is a 5 megapixel 1080p webcam. HP has built in some other uh, glam effects and, and following effects that is a trend that's growing, but I'm not going to focus too much on that because I just don't see that being the difference maker for someone wanting this machine versus anything else. But of course, the actual gain in uh, webcam performance in this age of Zoom being uh, and video conferencing in general being more important than ever is still critical. Also, we have privacy settings, the ability to sign in using your face, using Windows Hello. It's really a major redesign. So when you look at the previous generation, you know, you may have been happy with that, but you're getting better battery life here, a better display, better design in my opinion. Uh, granted, again, going from six cores to four cores with the Intel CPU, but we are gaining uh, Gen 4 NVMe SSD speeds. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, essentially Gen 3, you were looking at around 3,000 on the read and write. Now, we're, we've doubled that effectively. So you may or may not actually see that in real world performance, but trust me, it's a legitimate real world gain. And I would always rather have that 11th gen uh, NVMe SSD support than not. Now, the build here, just to recap, because I've been talking about a lot of different things about this machine. I've already discussed the display being the first of its kind, especially with, uh, you know, pen and touch input, um, and that's part of making it a flexible two-in-one, and I'll get to uh, the different positions, of course, that you would likely want to put this in, but beyond that 3840 by 2400 resolution OLED that peaks at a little under 400 nits of brightness, you have that Intel uh, Core i7 11th gen processor, the 11390H. It is, as I stated, a little bit slower than the 6-core uh, 10 series uh, H processor from the predecessor, but uh, in every way, this machine is better, in my opinion. The SSD is an Intel Optane drive, one terabyte. Personally, you know, it's fine out of the box. Would I upgrade it myself? Absolutely. That's not something uh, that I would hold on to, and if you're customizing this at HP, I'll include a link uh, to go direct through HP as well. You don't have to buy a pre-configured uh, machine from Best Buy, of course. I would opt to go with a different drive than the one included here. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the RTX 3050, as I mentioned, 4 gigs of VRAM. By the way, the CPU is a 35 watt chip, for those of you wondering, which actually is a good thing because this machine stays really quiet. And you may have noticed through the course of that 3D Mark uh, benchmarking, it didn't get that loud. Now, I had the speakers muted. Clearly, I'm talking about the cooling solution, and that's another big benefit besides the entire revamp of design language, rounding of the edges, a little bit less uh, infatuation with the gem cut identity, is that the internals were modernized, cooling is much more quiet, and when it's idle, it's barely audible at all, which I think is a very big win. Uh, beyond that, 16 gigs of RAM, it is soldered. I do not recommend going with eight uh, on any machine these days. I mean, I feel like the only machine where I have to reiterate that is with a Surface device because Microsoft is clinging to eight gigs of RAM for dear life. Beyond that, 
Um, knowing that it's soldered, you do have the option for 32 gigs. However, the price, at least last that I checked, was so egregious to jump up to 32 gigs. And considering, you know, the CPU GPU pairing here, I don't think anyone can really justify spending that additional money to get 32 gigs of RAM. I don't see where that would really give you the extra oomph that is missing from this machine with 16 gigs of RAM. Again, considering the CPU and GPU are nowhere near pushing any sort of uh, envelope in terms of their capabilities. They're good. They are certainly not amazing. This is about having a stylish two-in-one with a beautiful display that can do a little bit of everything. That's exactly what it is capable of. Uh, beyond that, you know, other options you do have with this, which I will comment on because I think it's relevant, is that, you know, you can uh, go with something uh, with the exact same build, but again, an IPS display instead, it'll be a 3K, that is resolution display, 3K+. plus. However, I recommend going with the OLED. I really think that is what sets this machine apart from everything. Uh, it is the only two-in-one to have uh, this display, only laptop to my knowledge to have this display. I'm sure that's going to change over time, but right now, here in mid-February, it's we're leaning towards later February, being that it's the 18th, you just aren't going to find this sort of uh, display on anything. Now remember, because it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, rather than 16 by 9, you will get letterboxing uh, when watching uh, video content. I demoed that in the past. I can do that again. Let's go ahead and just open up Chrome. And uh, basically, what you're going to see is exactly what I'm telling you, is that we're going to get a little bit you know, of letterboxing with content. Let's go ahead and take a look at some 4K HDR. I will add it is not uh, HDR capable, but I'm not finding huge fault with that either uh, because, again, that's not really common on most laptops. And again, how many competing products are there for this to begin with? Really not many. So take a look and a listen to this. Speakers are at 100%. Let's make sure they are on YouTube as well. They are. Brightness is not at 100%. I might add. So let's stop it there. I mean, I think the display is really excellent. Uh, I don't have any critique for it in terms of finding fault with it. That's why at the very beginning of this video, I mentioned the fact that it's 60 hertz. And I feel like that is going to be something a lot of people harp on. Do I think that's a fair critique? Yes, I understand why it will be mentioned. It's a premium machine. It's inherently going to be compared to what Microsoft has out there. And of course, Microsoft made sure that all of their machines this year have, really last year, have 120 hertz as an option. However, none of them have an OLED, and certainly none of them have a 16-inch OLED uh, that is beyond UHD. So, not really a fair comparison, in my opinion, but I get why the average consumer would look at this and say, my phone has 120 hertz, I'd like my laptop to have it. So I completely respect it and understand it, but I do think it's a little bit uh, overdone. Uh, another video sample, again, good old Costa Rica, never goes out of style. Save up to $500 we did get an ad, and you can hear how loud that is. Get special financing for five years on select you know, it doesn't really provide a rich experience in my opinion, but it does give you a really nice one uh, in terms of just being loud and clear, but a lot of bass, anything like that, it will hit the wall, no question.
And, you know, the Wi-Fi 6 performance, which I, of course, have a Wi-Fi 6 router in the house. I have since inception, essentially. Works beautifully. No issues with Wi-Fi at all. Not that that's surprising. All right, so enough reptiles. I think you get the idea. The display, in my opinion, is the best probably on any machine right now, as long as you are not seeking high refresh rate. With that out of the way, let's talk about gaming. Now, a uh, handful of games I have on this machine, I'm not gonna do a gaming demo today, and even though this is my full review, if that's something that I really see is in demand from my audience, then I shall provide. However, it's fair enough to say that if you're interested in using this primarily as a productivity machine, uh, and essentially you love the fact that it's touchscreen, has a beautiful display, it's beautiful all around, frankly. Um, I love that they got rid of uh, the grill that was up here for ventilation. It's just a much cleaner design, and the rounded edges, some of you don't care for them. Well, I'm one of them that far and away prefers them. In fact, if you look at the first Spectre I covered on my channel, I was pretty critical of the gem cut design that so many people love. I felt it was a little too ostentatious, and I feel like this machine takes a step in the correct direction, which is more subdued, more professional, um, and just not as gaudy, frankly. Uh, and that's not to say I don't like the uh, previous design. I personally purchased and own uh, Spectre 13, I'm sure many of you know, uh, because it is still a unique machine in its class. But back to this, when it comes to uh, gaming on this, you know, essentially 1080p is the sweet spot. Now, will that work out for every single game? No. Um, I didn't even bother uh, trying to run some games on here because I installed enough at the very beginning to get an idea of where I'd be going. So, of course, CSGO is a non-issue. You're going to game at 1080p without a single hiccup. Um, when we get into slightly more demanding titles, let's say Battlefield 2042, which so many people love to hate. I'm not one of them. I actually enjoy playing it, uh, but maybe it's just because I've been playing Battlefield since the very first title that launched. Uh, that doesn't mean everyone is good, but you know, I didn't get in on 2042 at the release date, which is when it was full of bugs. Now it's bug free. So I guess that also changes perception. Also, if you have people to play with, it makes a big difference. Playing alone, difficult, but um, uh, I digress. You know, with Battlefield, you're not going to be able to run this uh, at 1080p with, you know, settings cranked up. That's obvious. This is an RTX 3050. It's based around studio drivers, which are not that much different, but uh, nowhere near as aggressive as the traditional gaming drivers. And so basically what that means is that you know, you're going to have to step down settings, but you can still achieve completely playable frame rates. So this is not a gaming machine. I don't want anybody to think it is designed for gaming. It's, it just basically is really based around, I think, accommodating just about every walk of life user. So whether you're a pro that is never going to pick up a game, whether you're a student that's going to do some light gaming, uh, it's going to accommodate you. The fact that you have the pen input I think is incredibly useful and for everyone who will say, well, it should have been higher refresh. I mean, for me, the pen input is a completely tertiary, not even secondary feature. For people that it is a primary feature, then of course you're gonna to wanna to look for the device that is best for solely pen input, and then you're gonna run into a problem because there just aren't that many two-in-ones on the market anymore. I mean, Dell has really done nothing in the way of two-in-one in this size and form for years. LG is all about thin and light, which is great, but this being a little over four pounds, it's not that heavy considering it's a 16 inch laptop. And the last but, not, but certainly not least, Lenovo has a lot of strengths, but nothing in this size. They just don't have a 16 inch model. So I really find that the only other competing device for this, which still doesn't step up to its screen real estate is from Microsoft. And I would never recommend that over this product. This product is far more dynamic, far more affordable, and really delivers on so many things that I feel like Microsoft clearly misses on. And maybe that'll change over time, but where things stand right now, HP has a winner in every way compared to what Microsoft uh, has in their Surface uh, Laptop Studio. So anyone that was wondering, I don't have it here anymore. I reviewed it uh, back around launch, but this is clear uh, in a way the winner between those two machines. It is better in literally every single way possible. Yes, the pen input there I would give to Microsoft, but every other element is a win for uh, HP with the Spectre 16. Now, 
Again, um, light gaming, not a problem. Light photo and video editing, also not gonna be a problem. Can you edit 4K video? Absolutely. Would I pick this machine for editing 4K video? No, it's kind of like when I review any Ultrabook, they're capable of editing 4K content, but that would never be my primary choice. For example, reviewing the old Spectre uh, X360 13T, that was something that, you know, in a pinch when I was traveling uh, or just, you know, didn't want to have to go to a desktop or a higher performance machine, I knew I could do things. But if it was a priority, I would not task a machine like that with a video editing job. Photo editing, fine. I mean, Lightroom, uh, even going into Photoshop, you're not going to have any issues with this machine at all. The CPU-GPU pairing is more than enough. It's only really when getting into 4K video editing that it's just going to make things incredibly slow. And if time is money, which in basically all cases it is, no matter what you're doing, even if it's just for hobby, uh, you're going to be better suited going to a machine that is ideal for video editing. So a higher wattage CPU, obviously a better GPU, you get the picture. Now, overall, I think that, again, as the fans are spinning up, as much as I've complimented them for staying quiet, because they generally do, I've also changed the profile for anyone that is wondering. So let's jump into that for a second, uh, because I feel like, you know, if you're wondering why, this is not the regular profile. So just jumping into uh, Command Center right there, that's going to be where you also uh, can play with the webcam quality, but you see right now I'm at performance. If I go ahead and go to cool, uh, that is where, you know, essentially their pitch there is that the machine isn't going to get hot. And then of course, uh, balanced is where you're going to get a balance between the two. Now, personally, I live in performance mode, but in cool or balanced, you're going to see that it pretty much stays quiet. Uh, smart sense, uh, essentially acquiring, um, it, it, it caps the fan noise, basically, is what it is, to my knowledge. Um, so any of those modes, the machine is silent. If you listen right now, it is inaudible, at least for me, which means it's not going to be audible for any of you. Um, and, you know, the glam cam I made mention of, that to me is not a selling point. And the rest of this is not really too important. Um, you know, the display control, all of those things are good to have uh, here, you know, just being able to select a basic mode, if you will, uh, depending on what you're doing. And because you have this OLED display, it means that if you want uh, color accuracy, you've got it because this has nearly 100% uh, accuracy in every realm. So uh, that's just inherent with the majority of OLEDs, unless they are budget and, you know, inferior to what is generally employed in mainstream products like this. And here across the board, again, everything's hovering around 198, 97% accuracy. So for photo and video editing, that is a big appeal. But again, remember, this is definitely more ideal for photo than video editing when it comes to 4K, as I've stated over and over again, just like with gaming, totally capable of doing light gaming with that RTX 3050, but not ideal. You're gonna wanna get to you know, some, a 3060 with max power, uh, or even a 3050 Ti, although I'd rather just go straight to the 3060, 3070. The new Ti's I'm not getting into because they're a nominal bump at best. But overall, again, uh, great battery life with this machine considering that UHD Plus display. If you want better battery life, step down to the IPS panels. You will get better battery life. They're lower resolution. Uh, but I would not substitute it for the quality of this display, especially since charging time is not that long. Uh, by the way, let's go over the body itself. Uh, the I.O. is still solid. I haven't mentioned it through the whole video. Uh, shame on me for that, but let's do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. And also, just a quick look at that keyboard one last time, uh, because this likely will be my last piece of content. Uh, it's just, it's a great keyboard. Um, very comfortable. Anyone that follows my content knows that I'm a big fan of HP's keyboard. Go ahead and bring up uh, the backlighting for you. So you have stages. And it's lit in here, so I don't know how well this is going to reproduce. That is the brightest level. Uh, but uh, it works fairly well. It's just clear lighting. You know, no RGB going on here. And essentially what I really like about this keyboard, besides actually typing on it, is that we have dedicated keys that I think every manufacturer should emulate. So we have a dedicated switch for turning the mic on and off, which in the realm 
of, again, video conferencing RS, critical to have. Uh, you also have, of course, dedicated pretty much everything, but the other one is for privacy on the camera. Now, when you hit that, you can see right there, the webcam has a white shield, some masking. I hit it again, that is gone. So to me, that's another critical thing to have employed. And the fact that they have LEDs to let you know that these are being, or I hit the power button, hopefully we don't power down, that was accidental, of course. The fact that we have LEDs um, is another nice feature because you're never wondering, you never have to go check anything. Um, you just are going to see that either you've got that amber light or you do not. Um, in terms of other things, fingerprint uh, scanner right there. Some people may not like the positioning on that. I completely understand. Generally, fingerprint scanners are out of the way. They're on the keyboard deck or, of course, higher up uh, along the row of F keys. This way, you know, if it's in the function line, you don't have to worry about accidentally, uh, well, it interfering with the sense memory you formed over learning to type through the course of your life. Uh, so I didn't find a major issue with it, but something to be aware of. Uh, but everything works as expected here, and key travel is good. And the touchpad, that's another major improvement uh, because it is much larger, and it just feels smoother. Uh, really, as flawless as any Spectre touchpad has ever been. Uh, so that's another important thing. Uh, beyond that, let's go ahead and close this up. I don't think there's anything else to show you on the deck itself. You know the speaker grills are there. Well, actually, before I close it up, let's go into the actual different modes. So for content consumption, this is the obvious answer, right? You have the ability to essentially stow the entire deck, just have the 16 inch uh, gorgeous uh, OLED UHD plus res display and to your heart's content, binge watch, uh, consume content. And that's an ideal way to do it. Um, another, you know, a lot of people like to just have it in the tent mode, which go ahead and spin around and this is another way, you know, if you're showing a client something on screen, this is another ideal way to utilize, uh, you know, the ability to have this go 360 degrees. Tablet mode, yet another. I mean, some people think this is ridiculous. Uh, I understand why. It's a 4.4 pound tablet. Do you really want to use something like this? The irony in criticizing that is that to me, options are always good to have whether you plan on using them or not. So while I don't find myself using it this way, uh, I could see people that want to draw on the display using it in this orientation or taking notes. So I think a lot of people misunderstand that this really isn't targeted at being a tablet, but more so a way to take notes. Um, you put this on your lap and it's a lot easier to write on than in any other orientation, clearly. Uh, so just one way of looking at it. And then as I unfold this again, we are going to take a look at the bottom. Don't worry. Uh, that back finish, really nice. A little bit of fingerprints um, there. It is, I wouldn't call it a magnet, but it certainly gets dirty. The HP logo always looks good. I think basically all manufacturers could take a lesson from HP when it comes to uh, their branding uh, and the logos. Uh, but those of you wondering whether or not you can open this one-handed, the answer is yes. I will demonstrate that right now. No issue at all. And it's just a really nice machine. Let's go ahead and take a look at those ports. So on the right hand side, you can see we have a micro SD card slot right there. And then to the right of that, we have a Thunderbolt 4 port, the power pin, that's a barrel connector uh, for charging. That's what was connected through the video. And yet another Thunderbolt 4 port. So anyone wondering if this is good I.O.? The answer is yes. Having two Thunderbolt 4 ports uh, that also can trickle charge is an excellent idea. And still retaining the micro uh, SD card slot, I think, is also really smart. Coming around to the other side, we have HDMI out as well as a Type-A USB port. So really covering their bases. Uh, they've got everything that you could need. Ventilation here and then on the bottom, of course, more ventilation. You can see uh, the two fans right here. You should be able to see those on camera. Uh, that is where all the cooling is going on. I believe the NVMe SSD is right here. That is really the only thing that I will say is user replaceable. And that's not to say that these things can't be changed out. Uh, I mean, everything can from a repair standpoint. Uh, I believe there are four, yep, four T5 Torx screws here. Uh, and you can get in. I don't know that I'm going to open this up before I send it back. If that's something people really want to see, you can probably just look at HP's own 
uh, video where they detail taking this apart and getting inside. Uh, but overall, it's made well, it looks good. I think the rounded edges are a major upgrade over uh, the previous design. And what else can I say? Uh, very similar to uh, performance to the 15T from last gen, but what an improvement on the display, what an improvement on the key, the, not the keyboard, the keyboard's very similar, but the touchpad, the trackpad, what an improvement on the design of, you know, rounding the edges and making this much more subdued and professional looking, in my opinion. And for some of you, you'll prefer the old design, completely respect and understand that. And then most importantly, on top of all of that, it is so much quieter and battery life has improved, which may be enough to sell you, uh, or rather get you to buy one of these if you're in the market for it. But try to remember, there really aren't any other competing products. And when you take that into account and the fact that HP did a really nice job with this, it's easy for me to say right here again in February of 2022, this is the best two-in-one of its kind, again, in a large form factor uh, on the market today. And that rounds things out. Again, solid battery life, stays quiet, stays cool, can do a little bit of everything. Gorgeous 16-inch UHD Plus OLED display that you will find no other display like it uh, on the market, literally right now at least, hopefully down the road. Only caveat, again, is uh, the fact that the display is 60 hertz. As long as you understand and respect every element of this machine, I think you'll be happy. And you know the pen works well. It's just more about taking notes than, you know, inking your next masterpiece. That pretty much rounds things out. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.